I've got the bubble plates running right now and I thought this would be a good time to take some time out and uh, give us some advice on exactly how to drive these things. How's it going chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse and this is Still It, the channel all about chasing the craft of home distillation and making it a legitimate hobby. So yes, I know George just made a video like this and uh, it's not that I'm copying him, it's that a Patreon asked me to make this video three, four weeks ago and I'm lazy. By the way, huge, huge congratulations to George. 100,000 subscribers. Anyway, let's talk about how to drive these things. I think it's kind of important that we have a look at the anatomy of them and then have a at least a cursory glance at the theory and how they work. Because if we understand them, then you get a much better ability to manipulate them to do what you want them to do, right? So first of all, uh, what the hell do they do? Essentially, all these things are doing is forcing the interaction of liquid and vapor inside your still. That's, that's it, that's what they do. <laughs> this is a four inch plate, uh, which just literally means that it sits within a four inch column. Uh, and this particular one has five bubble caps and one down comer. Now a bubble cap and a down comer are basically exactly the same thing, they're just facing the other way. Let's look at the bubble cap first. Reminder, on this plate here I've got five of them. Literally all it does is allow the gas to come up through here, out through these little holes, and then this cap forces the gas back down under the level of the liquid sitting on the plate, which allows it to bubble up through it, forcing that interaction between the two. That means it's effectively a one-way valve, allowing vapor to move up through the still uh, and not allowing liquid to move back down. This is also a one-way valve, but now we're sending liquid down and stopping vapor from coming up. So liquid, as it gets uh, above the level of this, or as a bubble pops and throws a little bit of liquid in there, obviously gravity will pull it back down and allow it to come out the little holes at the bottom. But because we have this little cup sitting here uh, at the bottom, we're creating a little reservoir for the liquid to sit in. So this cup itself fills up, and then as more and more liquid comes through, it starts spilling out through the holes and dripping back down onto the plate below it, or back into the pot. The very fact that this cup is full of liquid is what stops the gas getting back up through those, uh, the holes where the liquid's coming out. We just said that this cylinder is slightly elongated compared to the bubble plates. And the reason for that is that it establishes the depth of liquid sitting on the plate. So as you can see, it is going to allow liquid to build up to the depth of that cylinder. I don't know the name for this very specific part sitting above the plate actually. Uh, but what it means is that it is setting the depth of the liquid on this plate under normal operating conditions, we'll get to that later on, ensuring that as the vapor comes up through the bubble caps, it's going to interact with, you know, a, a meaningful amount of liquid sitting on that plate. So to summarize, the bubble plate is made up of kind of two one-way valves, I guess you can think of it as. One allows the vapor to pass up through the middle, it hits the cap on top, forces the vapor back down and around, forces it to go under the level of the water and bubble up around it. The pressure itself of the vapor coming up through the middle stops the liquid sort of being able to encroach on that area. As you can see actually from a really cool uh, little clip of slow-mo footage I got in the, the video I did on the cleaning run. Check this out, it's pretty cool. You can see it happening in slow motion. The other one-way valve allows liquid to spill back down to the plate below it or into the pot below it. Once it reaches a certain height, the liquid goes down through the middle of that cylinder, hits the cap in the bottom, fills the cap up to the point where it starts to spill over. And because we have this reservoir of water sitting underneath, there's no direct path for the vapor to go up. So like I said at the beginning, all we're doing, the only thing we're doing is forcing liquid and vapor to interact with each other. Sorry, I was planning on recording this part standing in front of the still so I can point at things. But uh, it's raining so hard I can't hear myself think out in the tin shed. Instead, we're gonna be in here. And I'll put some pretty stuff on the screen. All of that part at the beginning was just to say that a bubble plate literally helps us create the interaction of vapor and liquid within our still. 
Driving a plated still is literally all about just facilitating that. So we want to ensure that we have enough liquid on each plate to make sure that that interaction is happening. But we also want to make sure that we're not flooding the plate. So flooding the plate is where we just start to get too much liquid on the plate and it builds up, builds up, builds up and floods, funnily enough. And the, and this can actually turn into a little bit of a, um, it's almost like a run, runaway type thing. Once it starts happening, it'll happen faster and faster. The second thing we want to concern ourselves when running a still, like any still, is the amount of offtake we're taking off the end of the still. How much product is going over into the cuts jars, the collection jars on the other side. That's really all we're worried about. We have two levers that we can pull to push the still in the direction that we want. Uh, number one is the vapor speed. How much vapor are we sending up the column and we affect that by changing the amount of energy we put into the pot down the bottom. Number two is the knockdown potential that we're allowing the reflux condenser to have. So how much vapor can that condenser knock back down? Most people control this by the volume of water that they let go into the condenser. So you have a needle valve, uh, a tap, something that restricts the flow of water that you can adjust. This might seem super simple uh, until you realize that both of those controls that you have are going to affect both things. So let's, for example, say that we increase the amount of vapor speed. We're putting more energy into the pot. Now this is sending more vapor up the column. So depending on how the condenser is set up, it might actually send more reflux, reflux back down the column, but it's also going to uh, help push more vapor past that condenser and increase the speed of offtake over the other side. Lowering the amount of energy we put into the pot is going to do the opposite. Let's look at the condenser next. So if we increase the amount of liquid going into the condenser, crank it up, uh, we're going to decrease the amount of liquid coming out of the, uh, the offtake. And if it's not coming out the offtake, it's going back down the still. So we're decreasing the takeoff rate and we're increasing the amount of reflux landing on those plates. So driving a plated still is all about the nuance, the dance. I like to think of it as a bit of a negotiation between myself and the still. So it is finding balance and it is finding the sweet spot where you're getting the offtake you want, but you're also loading the plates the way you want to load them. Thankfully, the way these plates are designed gives us a fair amount of fudge factor. So we need to be precise. We need to negotiate with our still to get in a sweet spot, but the still lets that sweet spot be a little bit bigger than it could be. Uh, and the reason for that is that this plate likes to have liquid on it. There's natural reflux throughout the still. And once liquid is sitting on this plate, as long as there is, you know, some vapor coming up, it's not all just going to disappear. It will happen in certain situations, it will happen. So if you push it too far, the plates will dry up, but it likes to have liquid on it. Conversely, it also doesn't like to flood because it literally has a drain plug here. <laughs> it literally, once there's too much liquid on it, will send liquid actively, I mean, it's doing it passively, but you know what I mean? Once the liquid gets above this level, it's gonna send liquid back down to the plate below it faster. The thing is the still can only do so much, so you need to do your part too to make sure that uh, you're sitting in that Goldilocks zone. All right, let's talk about actual how I run the damn thing, cool? First of all, starting the still. What I like to do is um, put a pretty decent amount of power into my pot. So with two two kilowatt elements, I'm putting about 75%, 80% of that into the pot to start with. Uh, and I have my condenser set at full blast. So I'm sending a pretty decent amount of vapor up through the still, uh, but I am sending it all straight back down again. And I use that to load the plates. As the vapor goes up through the still, it's gonna hit the condenser, it's gonna send it back down, obviously, and then it's gonna cascade from plate to plate until all of the plates are well loaded and bubbling away. The next thing you need to do is start to allow some products to get you know, through that condenser uh, and out through the line arm, through the product condenser and into our cuts jars. And I like to do that by slowly, slowly reducing the amount of water going into the condenser. 
Like I said before guys, this is a negotiation and any input you put into the still, so if you adjust the power or you adjust the water, it may take a little while for that result to actually manifest itself. So don't go making large changes and don't go um, making a change, oh nothing happened, make another change, nothing happened, make another change, nothing happened. Because by the time you make the third change, the first change is only just starting to affect the actual way the still's running. So at this point I'll assess what's coming out off the end of the still. Uh, with a 4 inch bobber plate I can actually take a, a pretty quick offtake speed and I like to do so because you know me I, I tend to run it on the dirtier side for most things. So let's say that your offtake speed is slightly slow uh, and you're also not getting your plates aren't loading quite enough. So to fix that uh, what I would do is probably actually, this, this sounds bizarre because you want the offtake speed to be faster, but I would leave the water in the condenser perhaps where it is or maybe even turn it up just a smidge. So give it more knockdown powder, power uh, and instead crank the power in the still up. So we're sending a lot more vapor up through the column. There's more vapor to overpower the condenser and let vapor through, but we're also condensing you know more vapor and sending it back down as reflux. If you're making small changes slowly you're going to get to a point where things just you get it dialed in and they balance. Now a quick note guys this is different every time you run the damn thing. It's not going to be a, uh, a specific setting that you set once and that's the way you use it every time you run it. It will be different. The more you run it the more you're going to get to know it and the quicker you're going to find that point of uh, balance for the still and the speed that you want off the other side. So, I need to say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons! Thank you, Patreons! I'm struggling to get out of the way in this chair. <laughs> but uh, you're the reason I get to do this stuff. Thank you so very much, guys. I really, really, really do appreciate it. So, I hope this video helped you out. I hope that there's some people out there that now better understand how this works, or are more likely to give it a nudge, or that we're scared of a plate, and now sort of uh, are happy to go and try it themselves or to get that equipment that they were thinking about buying. I really do hope that that's the case guys. If it is, if I've helped you out, please, please give me a thumbs up. That would be awesome. If you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button down below and I'll catch you next time guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.